Um, what I really like to uh, touch on, though, is the real the real importance of the music industry as it relates to songwriters and producers. Uh, the music business really only boils down to two things. I don't care what you do. If you're an attorney, if you're a manager, if you're a writer, if you're an artist, you play the gazoo, play bass guitar, it doesn't matter. It's going to boil down to two things. Those two things are copyrights and masters. Who owns the copyright? Who controls the master? Who controls the master? Who owns the copyright? Period. That's the whole music business. So whatever you do, that's why the record label says, come over here, cool artist, sign right here because we want to own the master. The publisher says, come over here, cool songwriter, because we want to participate in the copyright ownership. Reason being is because that's where all the revenue is being generated. What you do today affects what happens tomorrow. And so when you're writing a song right now today, that's affecting your future as it relates to your earnings. And unfortunately, at some point, we're all going to die. That's just that's how it goes, and that's the unfortunate part of it. But that becomes like your 401k plan. You guys have heard of the 401k, right? Corporate America has what's called the 401k plan. The music business has publishing. The equivalent to the 401k plan in corporate America is called publishing in the music business. So if you're not focusing on publishing, in my humble opinion, you're doing something, but you're not doing business. People think that they're hot, right? Well, if you're hot, then you should have maybe a couple buy-ins, like a family member or a cousin or an uncle or somebody that believes in what you're doing. Uh, you know, cause people run around talking about, oh, i got to find a manager, you know. All of that stuff says to me a lot of times that people are not willing to put forth the effort that it takes to be successful. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're saying, I'm looking for a manager, no, man, get relevant. Trust me, when you're hot, I'm going to find you. I will find you because guess what? Somebody's going to tell me about you. I'm going to find you in a Google search or something, but I'm going to know about you because you're hot. It's not going to be based on, you know, some necessarily some your management or something like that. Uh, most of those deals or opportunities that you get come as a result of what you're doing. Hi, my name is Brew. Brew, my brother. You know, y'all related? Yes, bro. Nah, I'm just messing. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're going to say something at the same time. Too. We go by Third World. Okay. We're um, based out of DC. And okay. We, um, we had the pleasure to travel here with our dynamic producer. Mm -hmm. Thanks, um, Felicia. This gospel song is uh, very new for us. You know, so we had sort of a challenge doing it, but a challenge is always a good thing. Okay. So, um, so did you do gospel sort of specific to what Arrow does? Is that the reason why you? Um, no, no, no. Uh, the uh, the uh, challenge was to create a gospel song okay. for right. for to to be in this uh, event with DP. Okay. Cool. And to be honest, I've never created gospel in my life. Okay. And uh, we've been raised and be you know Catholic church too, so it's like okay, how do we do this? So you're not a total heathen. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> So, um, so, you know, I'd like to get right into it and just um, show you a clip of what okay. we try to do. So, you know, Hope you enjoy. Absolutely. It will be attempted. First time making gospel. So this is Kirk Franklin. Good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're just yeah. gonna jump like yeah. Cheesy. All right. All right. Um, yeah, this is my first stab at it, but actually, I'm I'm glad that they picked this assignment because it's stretching us, and it kind of it was like perfect timing for me because I've been studying theory and piano, so I kind of put it to test and. I worked on this arrangement and it's in D flat and I just called up a couple of my songwriter friends last week and uh, we just hashed this out. It's called His Love. I it's like most of my tracks in F sharp, but D flat would do. F sharp and D flat. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Just to, to add some maybe strings to move, push it a little mm -hmm. bit, and then the sounds kind of like just work on the sounds. <clears throat> I kind of had a vision for this one, like just a worship 
song, mm -hmm. kind of maybe something you would do before um, before you really get into the sermon, just, you know, one of those spiritual moments where you just kind of have that time to worship. And uh, kind of envision this like a, um, just a blank slate, so you can kind of interchange songs. Like I heard um, you might be singing uh, Amazing Grace on one phrase, and then you can change it to another song. So. <laughs> drum programming like live drums and stuff but I haven't really gotten into it like that. I guess I'm I saying even in just the snare or the, or the rim shot or something. Mm -hmm. Oh just mm -hmm. rolling and kind of. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was envisioning more like you know one of those slow worship songs that you can just kind of I don't know. Really gotcha. little, like a dining see, see the thing that you guys got to realize too uh, sometimes like when you're putting these songs together or tracks together like you got to you got to really make it a lot. Because me, not me per se, but the A&R person that's listening on the other side, it requires too much conversation. If we got to talk, then that's too much. Right. All you should do is walk in the room and just hand them the CD. And that's it. No disclaimers. People come in like, oh, it ain't mixed. Yeah, all right. We, I know. Heard that a hundred <laughs> times already. Just play it. But but you got it's got to be there, though. Mm -hmm. Because right. otherwise, it's like it, it requires me to think too much. So when you're pitching your songs, like they should be as close to a song as they possibly can be. Like it's man, I could take that thing from you right now and throw it right on the radio. Okay. It's got to be that close, because okay. otherwise it's it's just your competition and the person that's coming in after you is come is bringing the music in that way. And so it goes from like from imagine you're on the highway in the center lane and you're doing 20, and everybody else is doing 100, and that's how it. It's like, man, you doing, you, come on, man. It's like, I can't even, because the dude in the other car, is, so when I hear it, you, you have to bring it like that. Otherwise, it's, it doesn't work for you. And it's not you necessarily, it's just that it's not translating because it requires the people to have to too, do too much. Yeah. Like, I don't want to get involved like that. I don't want to develop it. I don't want to, because the music business is moving much faster than that. You know, the stuff that Rob played, that's exactly what I would have done. Exactly. That's, what he that's did. my yeah, normal style. Yeah, yeah. So I think now I think I take it as, you know, it's a perfect critique because it, it lets me know you got to do with what you feel comfortable with. My first thought jump to it was like if I was to do a gospel record for somebody that, you know, um, I would. It, it, my first. My first feeling, my gut feeling would be to do something like Mary Mary or something contemporary, something that would get the people moving or get the crowd going, you know, a big record. I changed and that's my first jump. I changed his mind. Yeah, and you know, we read the spec and it says contemporary gospel, said, you know, classic, something classic. classic. It wouldn't have mattered if we already made the track. I guess it could have. A little bit. Because if we had researched, we was coming here and said, oh, we're going to Arrow. Dude, pull out something, scratch the classic right, gospel yeah. track. Okay, yeah. Pull out one yeah. of your hot ones. And let's, you know, let's go bang it out because of who we know or who we researched to know that's that arrow. Um, I guess we, should, we probably could have done that. Yeah. That's definitely something. Good lesson, though. Definitely. How you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? Rob, nice to meet you. Rob, nice to meet you. My pleasure. I got a, uh, a r and track like a Mary Mary. Okay. Like a previous track. Okay. No, not that one. There's another no, song. I'm saying you have a record that you did for Drea? Yeah. Let me hear. 
He's like, oh, I'm messing up. <laughs> <laughs> well, now listen, listen. This is this is what you guys gotta understand too. When you're taking these meetings, you gotta do research. Like, don't just take them as like random meetings. Like, I meet with people all the time who don't do simple research. And I just hired someone for the marketing position, but I go through all these people and I'm evaluating them and eliminating them with one question: Have you been to the website? And they were saying no. I'm like, how you think? I'm just not gonna hire you. Like we could, we the interview's over, but let's just continue to dazzle each other for a bit. But if you tell me you ain't been to the website, that's stupid. The meeting's over. So I'm saying the same thing applies to you guys when you're taking these meetings. Like this guy should know. I'm going to Arrow. He should have been to the website. Boom, Drea. Oh, I got the record. Cause now, see the difference is, is now he's talking about something that I want to talk about. You see what I'm saying? I want to talk to all of y'all. But this is another conversation because I got 10 artists and I'm trying to figure out what to do with them. And if he comes in here and plays a smash for me for Drea, I'm going to say, who's your attorney? That's my next question. Mm -hmm. Whatever meeting you go into, that's, listen for that question. Because that, if you don't hear that, then you ain't accomplished what you went in to accomplish. <laughs> True story. That's every meeting I take, I only listen for that. I'm like, I'm waiting to hear who's your attorney. When I hear that, I'm like, oh, all right, we're talking. <laughs> wow. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> Pastor, mm -hmm. and he's in contact with the pastor here. I think he just because he's a son sent the song over. Okay, all right. So we should definitely play it for Drea. It's it's in the lane of where we are going with the album right now. So it. I mean, it feels right. It's nice. We we'll definitely Thanks. play it for Mac. Wait, the whole album. The whole album. Ask for it. Ask for it. Really unbelievable is how I feel right now. I gotta cultivate this situation that I'm in currently. I uh, definitely want to follow up with Capriccio and uh, see what else we can do. Other, well, definitely while I'm here in Atlanta, and uh, go on from there. Follow up. Going to NR meetings and sometimes I'll be like, "Well, man, I'm just getting started," or "I don't have the equipment." Or I don't have the sound that Timberland got. I came. I don't have an engineer. I don't have this. What you have to understand is when you present your tracks, you're in the same caliber and competition as Kanye West, Pharrell, Rodney Jerkins. No one cares what you made your stuff on. No one cares. You're trying to get it's usually 12 slots on an album. You think they care if Kanye made it on this or you made it on Fruity Loops? All they care about is what's hot. So that's an important thing, your sound, too. You can't go in there and be like, oh, man, it ain't really mixed yet. They just heard Kanye West beat. They just heard Timberland's beat. A lot of times, these a rs are not musical people. They're business people. So you can't expect them to get certain things that musical people like us would get. That's why you're like, man, I can't believe they didn't pick that song. They just didn't hear it. They, they're not trained musicians that understands what a B flat minor chord is. You know what I'm saying? Or a progression or, you know what I'm saying? They don't understand nothing. They understand numbers. And if they think it sounds good, some of them take it home to their kids. You like this? So. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, I would like to get into some music. Get some of you guys playing some tracks back a little around and see what it takes. How did we get here? I'm 
glad that you had somebody on the hook so I can get to this point. When you're the producer, so when you let vocals go out a certain way, they don't look at the singer. They don't know the singer because you present it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's too much technology that we have. Melodyne, auto-tune, all type of stuff that you could fix vocals and do it, you know what I mean? To make it a little bit more presentable. So as a producer, we take all the blame. It, it, it don't matter. Okay, she was a little pitchy. I don't know her. You right here. I'm looking at, dang, you didn't tune the vocals? You didn't, you could, man, come on. You could have turned it up a little bit, nudged it a little bit, melodined to put it up on that. You know what I mean? So that's one of them things. Like when I, um, I don't do, well, I demo everything, but I don't really submit songs because I love the artist being there because the great part of an artist being there, which is a long process to get there, I had to serve the beats and let people write them and do this, but once you get there, they can actually tell you, nah, I don't like that. I wouldn't say that word. I would say it like this, or this key is too high. This is do that, let's do this. I had this idea that was, it was just an idea though. You know what I'm saying? So it, it helps a lot more in the creativity, but as a producer. This is still a demo too. Hey, first thing I said, when you go in the office and play that, Timberland just played me a smash. He didn't tell me this was a demo. I know it's a demo because it's not the artist singing. Um, I definitely agree. Um, the, the vocals definitely need a little bit. Um, so, you know, I definitely got to go back, get Melodyne, work on uh, my pitch correction. Um, so, yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree with what he said. Two for two. Uh, I, I like that one too. Thank I you. wanna hear some more of what you got. Thanks man. Yeah. Definitely. It's good. Pleasure. Yes, sir. I listen to a lot of country, but I never made any country, you know that? No. Nah. I don't know. I'm like all inspired to go and pick up a guitar and try it. Man, you Fail, should. Go back to what I was doing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean there's nothing wrong with standing in your lane. Like, yeah, you know. That's that's how I'm feeling. You know, I got a niche. I think Stay it's mostly in the car listening to country. That's my niche. Right. <laughs> So I need that one. Okay. So I feel. That's a radio song. Yeah. And I actually want to write to the track, so oh, I like cool. that. Yeah. Cool. That's dope. I like it. But that's that's the difference right there between something you can hear on the radio with the right song yeah. than the other one. I got you. So the most important thing that I'm hearing, everybody has a good sound. The only thing is left is to create something that somebody loves. And no one is 100% like, you know what I'm saying? I make whack stuff all the time. If it's whack, the thing is being true to yourself and knowing what's whack. And not being jumping all over the studio and you, Come on, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Trying to figure out what would be a single. This, this might be a horrible answer, but you, you just kind of throw, throw darts at the wall and like be consistent with your sound. Um, because if you're consistent and you get enough material to the right hands, to the right people, you know, blah, 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 
salon, um, you might get that single. And that's, that's what you're working for. This is a game that you have to give to get. A lot of people get that twisted. They, you think you can just come in and be on the status and get this amount of money and do this and do that. This is a, a game that you really have to pay your dues. You know what I mean? And one of my good friends told me 100% of nothing is absolutely nothing. So you can have a million tracks and don't nobody hear them and own 100% of it. Or you can own a piece of it and the world hear it. You know what I mean? So you got to give to get in this game. Ain't no such thing as you coming in, you getting this amount of money, you getting production credit, you getting this, you're getting this. I did that whole song. Nobody would have heard it. So you got to give to get. That's very important. And a lot of people just want to be in the music business because they think it equates to money. You can make a little pot of money, that's fine. But as a star, it becomes a career. There's a lot more entailed, just like Troy said, there's a lot more entailed in the music business than just singing or making beats. Well, there's a star quality that gravitates people to you. If you don't have that, you're just one of. There's nothing special about anybody in this room unless you make yourself that star. You give yourself that niche. You give yourself that something. I don't have the star quality. I know it. That's why I love being behind the scenes. I can make my music. My music, I can do things with my music that I cannot do in front of you. I ain't gonna stand up and be like, <laughs> I'm not that guy. But when I sit down in front of an NPC, I'm that guy. That's good. You feel what I'm saying? If you don't have that, I won't say uh, uh, attitude, but it has to be like the, in the pit of your stomach. If you don't have that, there's no reason to try to get in this industry because they're going to chew you up and spit you out. And then they're going to replace you with somebody that looks exactly like you, does the same thing you do, and they might even name them the same name they gave you. <laughs> Keeping it 100. Like, that's how ugly this business is. He's not lying when he's saying that a lot of people want to come through and they get through the gate. Everyone who sings is not a singer. And every singer is not an artist. And every artist is not a star. And every star is not a superstar. And every superstar is not a legend. And every legend is not an icon. So which one are you? And I did it, I said that a long time ago, and it, it stuck with me, and every time I would do a seminar or whatever, I would open up with that. Because it's true. Just because you can sing don't mean you can, you're a singer. That means you just can sing. And you, just because you're a singer don't mean you're an artist. So maybe you're supposed to just write. You know, write songs for people. Just because you're an artist don't mean you're going to be a superstar or a star. You know, you could probably be, you know, stop at an artist and, you know, get your songs out there and, you know, put, you know, sell a little here and there. Just because you're a star don't mean you're going to be a superstar. And, and it goes on, but a lot of people don't know when to stop. stop. Like, okay, this is probably as good as it gets for me. I'm just going to chill. All of us come from, like, different backgrounds. We're all in different cities. We all have different financial situations. And then we all have different musical outlooks you know it's just that like looking for that that path like do we have tunnel vision and look one way or, or do we try to throw rocks and you know see where the ripple hits you know i'm just to any me, any advice all i know is that right now the only way to get your name to make sense in music business is to make an artist you have to be synonymous with an artist or an artist has to be synonymous with you when you say timbaland who do you think of Y'all said that everybody said the same name. Aaliyah. When you say Missy, who do you think of? Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Yeah. When you say Aaliyah, you say genuine. It, it just, it all goes all in a circle. Like they knew exactly what they were doing. When we come out, we're going to brand our sound. Player, Aaliyah, yeah. genuine, this and that. That's all I'm working on right now. And I'm giving y'all my sound. Then I'm going to come out and I'm going to do my sound on me and my go. Yeah. 
the smartest thing that man then ever I'm gonna did. Do it on Why? Justin. Because he made himself, just like Troy said, he made himself a legend and an icon. Then he came back again. With then he uh, came back again. JT. What's up, man? I'm uh, JRV from South Carolina. Um, I'm gonna play y'all a kind of R&B crossover record I made. Um, no vocals on it, but kind of my idea or concept with the track was Skydive. Um, and with that, you know, it could go towards like relationships, like it's something scary, but it's something that could be, you know, exciting at the same time, a lot of different feelings. But also it could relate to life. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a relationship kind of thing. Super sharp. Hard. Yeah, it almost makes it hard to listen to it because it, that would change the entire feeling. You know what I'm saying? That's the only thing. But um, I like I like the textures of it. I think that it, it, the main instrument in that track would be vocals. So I would try to maybe find out, you know, have somebody write a hook to it and see how it feels like that. I'm a cordial guy, and I love the chords. Yeah, that's but you I mean. played something that felt like Trey from the Trey's chord. <laughs> that's <laughs> Trey. No, but it's, no, just the melody. I think that you could have went a little bit elsewhere with the okay. melody. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You play the safe. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of these R&B singers are, are not really singers, so they stay on that one note. Right. And it sounds like you know how to hold your own a little bit. So, so play with it, because whoever was playing that bass line, okay, so if you're playing that bass line and you understand notes, you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Play with the notes. Okay. Melody. Play with the melody. You find a, 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 a catchy melody. It doesn't have to stay there. Play with your head voice. You might want to turn around and set a falsetto somewhere that nobody thought it would have been. I have a good question. What were you saying? Uh, <laughs> I know it's a lot of out of tune. Honestly, like I made a record on the top of my head. So you were mumbling, or were you actually no, I saying? Was, I wasn't mumbling. Uh, what was the hook? Uh, girl, I like it when you flex that. Flex that. Oh, okay. That's what I thought it was. I thought flex, you were saying flex. Flex. <laughs> flex <laughs> that. Oh, okay, gotcha. I was thinking like you know a girl, you know that basically you see her there, she's bad. You know you don't want to see her. You know. Shine in the club or whatever you want to see her, you know, um, like flex yourself, you know, you right. look good. Show yeah, you just explained good. it, but I did not hear that in the song. Right. That's not a sample. Huh? Is that a sample? Who's singing the hook? Angel Lee. It's, but, it's, but it's no, not, not it's a sample. Not. So it's original. That's right. Like, the whole thing is original. Yeah. Yikes. Uh, I got my man Sonati Pop to rap on the verses. Angel Lee. Yeah, I would give it to him. That's the only thing. Huh? I, would, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would I would. I wanted a good rapper. That's what I'm saying. I was like, can't we put M on this? Yeah, like <laughs> I, would, I, would, I, would, I would kind of shock yeah. that as a hook in the NFB. Right. Okay, oh, oh, okay. wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm, I'm six years old. And I'm gonna. So you did the track. Yeah. And who who wrote the hook? Andrew. And you guys together, or you yeah. sent her the track and? Well, actually, he got the track. The rapper got the track and said, "Hey, we need to put a dubstep hip hop thing." That's what he wanted was dubstep hip hop. Okay. And I was like, okay, we gotta figure out a way to make it melodic and at the same time do it. Worked. It worked. It worked. Yeah. So 
It took me back a couple weeks to get it right, but that was the, we actually had a piano version where I just did piano. Ah, so it was dun, dun, And I changed that, you, you can hear the dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Well, that was a piano chord at first. And I have the piano version, like, it doesn't, you know, we used the synth uh, one because it sounded a little bit edgier, you know, it's kind of kept it a little bit Definitely, more. definitely, so, definitely, um, I, the hook, the changes, everything yeah. about that does say, like, uh, like a Rihanna, you know, uh, Eminem kind of thing, like or Ti. Yeah, or yeah. It oh, has to be somebody. Man. It got to be anthemic. Like that record, I would stand at the edge of the stage and just put my mic out to the crowd. That would be Ti ish. Yeah, that's a Ti. Even Jeezy could could yeah. say something. You know what I'm saying? That's an anthemic record. <laughs> I love both beats. Neck and neck is like that. Here trying to think about what's joining them to play for the next round. Cause, uh, I know they about to come with some heat, man.